I'm Jimmy Ferguson of the Southside Church of Christ in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Many of you have viewed the videos of our congregational singing that you will find on our YouTube channel. And we appreciate so much you viewing those videos and we do pray that they have been very, very uplifting to you. This brief study is entitled, I Will Sing. Singing has always been a vital part in the worship and in the lives of the Lord's people. We read in Psalm 100, verses 1 and 2, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. We also read in Psalm 104, and verse 33, I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. And then in the New Testament, in James chapter 5, and verse 13, James says, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. And then he asks, is any merry? Let him sing psalms. And so even there we find that the singing of spiritual songs is connected to one's joy, to a heart overflowing with gratitude and overflowing with joy. In this short study, we're going to consider two points. Number one, the purpose of singing and then number two, how to get more out of singing. Let's look at the first point then, the purpose of singing. The most common concept that we think of when we discuss the purpose of singing is to praise the Lord. And that is precisely what the Bible teaches. Sometimes we speak of these spiritual songs as being hymns. And rightly so, because the word hymn actually comes from a word meaning a song of praise. It should be very, very natural for Christians to praise God in song. Go back to the Old Testament for a moment in Psalm 28, verses 6 and 7. The sweet singer of Israel said, Blessed be the Lord, because he hath heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song will I praise him. One of the points that stands out is that David was very, very grateful to God because of the strength that he received from God and because of the help that he received from God. And so then it was natural for him to sing songs of praise to God out of a heart of gratitude. But then in the New Testament, we find another circumstance of Christians singing praises to God. And that's found in Acts chapter 16 and verse 25. The Bible says that at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Paul and Silas were being persecuted. They were in a Philippian jail, a Philippian dungeon. The Bible says that they were singing praises to God. I've always found it interesting that the latter part of that verse says, and the prisoners heard them. Luke could have stopped at the point that he made about Paul and Silas singing praises to God, and that would have told us a great deal about those two great men of God. But he didn't stop there. He added, and the prisoners heard them. What a profound impact their singing must have had upon the other prisoners. Surely it must have been a strange sound coming from the lips of those who were being persecuted and who were, uh, who were jailed and who were in chains. But then the singing of praises to God is also another way of our offering up spiritual sacrifice to God. We read in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15, By him therefore let us offer the, the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But then another purpose of our singing is to teach and admonish one another as Christians. Certainly, many, many of the songs that we sing are songs of praise to God, but not all of them. Some songs are primarily for the purpose of our teaching and admonishing one another. Listen to the writing of the Apostle Paul in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. 
And so then as we are singing in a congregation of the Lord's church, we are teaching each other, we are admonishing one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. But then another purpose of our singing is so that we can be filled and enriched. First of all, filled with the Spirit. There are two passages of Scripture in Ephesians chapter 5 which are in the very same context, so they're connected to each other. In the latter part of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18, Paul says, Be filled with the Spirit. Question is, how? Well, look at the very next verse. By singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Again, that's Ephesians chapter 5, verses 18 and 19. And then by our singing, we are also enriched by the word of Christ. Look again at Colossians 3.16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. How? By teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And by singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Well, in the second part of our study now, let's think in terms of how can we get more out of our singing. How can we get more out of our singing? Well, first of all, by engaging the mind as you sing. The mind has to do with the intellect. In other words, we need to be able, we must be able to understand what we're singing. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 15, Paul says, I will sing with the Spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. Certainly it would be a very little benefit, if any, if we're singing songs and we have no idea what we're singing because we do not understand the words. But then we can also get more of our, out of our singing by engaging the heart as you sing. Now, the heart has to do with the emotions. Look, if you will, again at Colossians 3 and verse 16. Paul says, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Now look at Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 19. Singing and making melody in your heart. The heart then has to do with the thoughts or the feelings. Yes, we need to be able to feel something, to feel emotion as we're singing. How can you sing a song like, How Great Thou Art, without feeling emotion? You're singing about the great and the awesome power of Almighty God. And we're praising Him through that song. How can you not feel something? How can you not feel emotion as you're singing that song? And many, many others. But then we can also get more out of our singing by realizing that singing is personal. When we assemble together as congregations of the Lord's people, I can't sing for another individual, nor can they sing for me. That is in my place. Look at Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 19. Paul says, speaking to one another. That makes it personal. That means that as we are singing and as we're teaching and admonishing one another, I'm singing to you and you're singing to me. Again, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16. And in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 19. But then we can also get more of, out of our singing by expanding the activity of your singing. Is your singing limit, limited to the assembly? You look again at Acts chapter 16 and verse 25, and Paul and Silas were singing in jail. Then we might also think of other places that, that we might sing, maybe even driving down the highway in our car. We may have a CD on and we're listening to gospel songs, to songs of praise, and we have an opportunity to sing along with those songs. And even in the privacy of our homes, as we sit down together as families and have devotionals, we can sing songs of praise to God there as well. And even in that setting, teach and admonish one another. And even in our homes, as we're going about our daily business, doing the work in the home or in the yard, we could sing there as well. David said in Psalm 34, verses 1 through 3, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. 
Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. And then Psalm 147 in verse 1. Listen to it very carefully. David says, Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant, and praise is beautiful. What a great activity to be able to sing songs of praise to God. Certainly as we assemble together as the Lord's people every first day of the week, this, of course, being one of the acts of our worship to God. Then, of course, again on Wednesday evening when we assemble together for midweek Bible study, we have another opportunity to sing praises to God and to teach and admonish one another through our singing. And even at other times, such as during our gospel meetings, we have the opportunity then as well. And at other times and in other circumstances in, the, in our own personal lives, we have opportunities as Christians, as children of God, to praise Him in song and to be lifted up and to be edified. I pray that this short study has been a benefit to each one of us who have thought about it, who have looked into the Scriptures for the purpose of singing and as we've discussed, as we've thought about how to get more out of our singing. I appreciate so much you doing this video. We bid you a very pleasant Good day.